Hello, my friends, and welcome to Brand Your Dream Show. Today, our guest is Stefan Zevelin. He is creative communicator, and he will talk with us about creativity, communication, and many other surprising things. Hi, Stefan. How are you doing? I am fantastic. This is going to be so exciting looking forward to it so tell us more about your story because when i ask my guests to introduce himself i start looking for the interesting story parts where they become who they are today so what inspire your creativity this is going to be a short version of a very long story um, but it's interesting in retrospect when you look back and you realize what huge events in your life pushed this, the were a catalyst to all this interesting change. So when I was finishing undergrad, I, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And my parents said, uh, you need to go to grad school. We paid for undergrad, you have to go to grad school. And I thought, okay, okay I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go to physical therapy school. So I went into physical therapy school. And at the beginning in the first semester, I got a parasite in my eye. This was in Philadelphia. Everybody always goes, oh, was it a crazy place? Nope, Philadelphia. Um, maybe still a crazy place by, by some people's standards. Uh, so as a result of that, utter craziness, misdiagnosed for a long period of time, I actually ended up losing a good chunk of my vision. Um, I did go back to school finally, I finished the degree and then I got into the clinic. But at that point, the damage was done and I was clinging to this degree saying, I achieved this. This is my identity, I'm a physical therapist, this is what I do. The entire time while in physical therapy school and even before, anytime there was a presentation or a project, I would go, can I make a video? Um, what's the fun way I can do this? Could I, could I do this in a fun, different way? Could I write a parody song on this? What can I do? Even though it's supposed to be serious physical therapist. And so while going through the clinic, my vision kept on declining more and more and more until finally the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, I ended up getting COVID and had long symptoms for it. And once that happened, I all of a sudden realized, I don't really want to go back to the clinic anymore. This is not what I want to do. Uh, I, I love teaching people. I think there's more to it. Um, and I said, all right, I'm out. And I left and I started a business called Love to Move, which was talking to a lot of people about how to reduce the amount that we're sitting at our desks. Um, that led me to doing a TEDx talk, writing a book, uh, doing a show called Scared Sitless, uh, which just for the fun of the name, all of that was very creative. And every single time I did any of those things, everybody would go, that is different. You did every one of those differently the way that people don't normally do it. You need to teach people how to do this different thing. Why aren't you talking about this? And I went, I don't have a degree in that. I don't do that. That's craziness. And so finally, we had our first kid and I had to take a little step back in the business because you have to take care of a child. Um, you should. It's a good thing to do to take care of children. And as a result, I went, well, let me explore this creativity thing. I'm kind of putting this on the back burner. Let me try it out. And I started interacting with dozens of entrepreneurs and saying, can I give you creative ideas of how to communicate better, how to express what you're doing better? Maybe it's social media, maybe it's other things. And it has blown up and flourished. And so it has come into now uh, me calling it the professional unicorn, which we will get into because that is an interesting reason of why I called it that. But uh, it has become creative assessments for communication of, of various things. So whenever entrepreneurs say what they do and everybody goes, I'm not sure what it is that you do. And they go on their website and they go, I am further unsure what it is that you do. I help make sure that it's, is it cohesive? And is it actually what you do? Or are you just using a bunch of buzzwords that, that you think help people know what you do? And that is the, the short version of the story, if you can believe it. <laughs> See, I really like how you wrap it. First of all, definitely, I liked your TEDx talk and I listened to that and I didn't realize basically that you were in therapy and things like that and that you had this very rapid shift to the marketing aspect because when I talk with you for the first time, you did sound like a hardcore professional, marketing professional, like a person who know the things like for 20 plus years at least, you know, something like that, which is very interesting how your mind works because definitely it's something unique. I saw many people who moved to marketing like recently and things like that, but they don't have that level of logic and foundation which you have, which I absolutely admire, a part of your creative thinking, of course. <laughs> so what I want to ask you, and I think it's a good start point, like when people present themselves, they many times do this mistake when they can't present themselves. And one of my guests said, like, I know a person in my network. 
I know she's a wonderful person and she has lovely top and two kids. I have no idea why I have to work with her. I love this explanation because, to be honest, I've been in this position for many, many years because I teach people branding. Nobody knows what branding is all about. So I pretty much that lady with wonderful top without two kids. But I want to ask you from the creative perspective, what visibility means for business and how to achieve this visibility? It's a beautiful question because I think a lot of people go, from what I've seen, the majority of people go, visibility just means get out there, be seen, um, and there you go. But the question is, what do you want to be seen about your business? And a lot of times when you ask people that, and then what is actually being seen from them, from their business, is a complete disconnect um, behind all of it. And uh, you you know this. People don't know what branding is. People don't know what marketing is. I call them dirty words because people think that a logo and brand colors are your brand. It's nothing about your brand. Um, we'll, we'll definitely get deeper uh, into all those things. But to me, visibility is, first of all, what do you want people to experience from you? I know we're going to be talking about authenticity. It kind of falls into it, but not entirely. I have my own soapbox on authenticity as well. With visibility, the question uh, has to be of what are you putting forward? How consistently are you putting that forward? Um, and does it actually match up with you relatively well? Now, a lot of people say you just have to be yourself, but that's not always necessarily true because if we think about actors, we connect with actors based off of roles they play. They're not really being themselves. They're being somebody completely different, and yet they have incredible visibility, and we're connecting to that piece of them and then sometimes we expect them to be the characters that they played. Um, and that's that's natural. That's understandable. So then the question can be, are you playing a character in your business? That's not necessarily wrong, but does that character align with the branding of your business? Is it consistent? And is that relatively visible for you? Because that's perfectly fine. Um, there's this one puppeting account. Um, they sell They sell various puppets. Their entire social media is them doing their puppets. I have no idea what the actual person looks like because that's not the part of the brand. And it's it's beautiful. The way they've done it is fantastic and hilarious and it's wonderful. And you feel like every new post is an adventure that this person goes on. Incredible visibility for their product. I have no idea what the person looks like. So I think it, it can look different. And the question is, what do you want people to see? Mm -hmm. I agree with you because I always set apart the idea of personal brand when people show as they are and there is no other way to show as somebody else <laughs> when you build your personal brand. So it's actually can harm personal brand. But when we talk about the business personality, brand personality types, it absolutely can be anything. And I absolutely agree with you on that. So let's talk about authenticity because it's always the second part of the podcast. And I would love to ask you in the context of being an actor in a context of speaking about brand personality how do we need or can show our authenticity should we separate our personal brand from business brand or from your perspective they can work together so i used to be of the full-on be authentic be yourself it was part of my branding it was part of the things that i always talked about one of the words that i used and then Seth Godin had to go and put a thought in my mind that authenticity is a crock. Um, and I thought about it and I went, interesting. Let me think it through. And I realized, unfortunately, that he was right. And I have a perfect explanation of why he's right. We use the word authentic. And what we tend to mean is showcase to us that you're human. Showcase us your humanity. And the difference is that, for example, if Beyonce is on stage, uh, or is about to come on stage, you bought tickets, you're excited to go to the concert. And she goes, you know, I've got a sore throat. I'm not going to do it today. So you guys can go home. It's fine. That is her being authentic. She's not feeling up for it. You're not happy about that. Now, if she goes, you know, I had a sore throat this morning, but I'm still going to give you the best show that you've ever seen. You go, oh my goodness, I love this. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I want. Because she was consistent with the brand that she's created, what she's delivering. But also she was human to showcase that, hey, I have hard days. Things are sometimes tough, but I persevere and go past it. So I think when we say authenticity, a lot of times we really just mean show us your humanity. Show us that you're not just a corporation, but you're actual human being and showcase those facets of you being a human being 
but understand that it's not literally every single tiny asset. And I think that's what authenticity uh, tends to be. And but people at the same time hide behind that. So one of my favorite questions that people ask is, what do you do? Uh, because what do you do? It's, it's a mind puzzle of a question. We, uh, we get asked, what do you do? We tend to answer who we are um, to the question of what do you do with a title, which also doesn't actually tell people who you are. It kind of tells them what you do, but it puts you into this box of, I am with this crowd of people that does this thing all of the time, right? When in reality, we need to answer, why do we do it? Um, so I'm a perfect example, I met with somebody yesterday, she is a financial advisor, but the way that she talks about it, she goes, I liberate families from financial debt. Okay, that tells me kind of what you do. It also tells me why you do it. Obviously, you care about what it is that you're doing. Um, and it tells me a little bit about who you are. You're obviously a person that's, that's going to be caring overall. A much better answer to that, what do you do part, a much more human answer than just her being, I'm a financial planner. Um, in that sense. And so I think we lose a lot where we think I'm being authentic by just sharing random bits of myself, but really you just need to be sharing the human parts of yourself with it all. I really love this aspect of adding this authenticity part into your introduction, because I think this is what I hear for the first time. Many people connect introduction and visibility, not with authenticity, but mm -hmm. <laughs> so well done. And interestingly, I read about Beyonce that she actually had a very strong fear of stage and she created a personality when she would step into that personality who was strong and vibrant, Beyonce as we know her. Mm -hmm. And she kind of pretend that she's that personality for a while while she grew uh, into that personality in such a way when this personality become herself. So yes, you're absolutely correct about, you know, building these constructs and building these ideas because self-concept is after all an idea and we can have different types of personality for different occasions because we act in some way with our family in a different way with business partners in a different way with our clients and with our friends the level of how much we share with these groups of people is also very very different mm -hmm. sometimes it's social appropriation but on the other hand it's like you know really your clients don't need to know all of that <laughs> Many people were captured, uh, were, were caught into this idea of the, you have to be vulnerable, you have to share everything. And then like they share everything and people are like, whoa, <laughs> that was too much. Now I really don't want to work with you. <laughs> That's for sure. To be honest, I've been in the shoes once I was on the webinar where somebody was uh, talking about he being in jail, he was drug addict and stuff like this. Very, very vulnerable story. Like 100% I no longer want to work with that person ever. But, uh, you know, he was a good expert before I was on that webinar. Anyways, uh, so probably still is for some people. I'm, I, I don't discourage you to share that. So what do you think about oversharing? <laughs> sure. So th this is a very interesting point. And I think this is why so many of us hide behind the titles of, of what, we, what we call ourselves is uh, the, one of the biggest things that I see with people, and I like to try to say it is they go for target audience and they try to say, I help everybody. I don't want to push anybody away. Any, good, any business is going to be great business for me. And in that case, you're actually pushing most people away. And you have to say no. There's going to be a portion of people that you have to say no to. That aspect of vulnerability did not work for you, but it might have worked on somebody else that went, Absolutely. he gets me. That dude was in jail. I, you, I was in jail. He, gets, he can actually understand me. Um, and I think that we try to people please too much. And we try to say, yeah, this could work for anybody. Uh, that's what you hear on all these networking events is everybody going like, yeah, you know, and they have this laundry list of people that would be great for them. And I'm going, I, I, I can't keep up. That's too many people to refer to you because we think that our products are for everyone, but they're not. Um, and so what that, that authentic part, the human part, the vulnerable part helps do is create the human connection for the people that are going to become your true big fans. And those are way smaller uh, but at least it's a filter mechanism. So that's the only way that I see it is that some people are not going to like it. My company is called the Professional Unicorn. Am I thinking there are going to be some people out there that are going to go, this kid has fancy colors and talks about unicorns and magic? Mm -hmm. um, that's not professional. I refuse to work with him. 
okay, that's perfectly fine. That's the filter system. Um, so then my day is filled with talking to people that want to talk about magic and unicorns. And I think I went out on that personally, but there are people that won't like that and won't care for that. It's a filter yeah. system. I absolutely love it. I was yesterday on uh, one of the business networking, local business networking, and um, it was more for the people who like starting the business or like, mm -hmm. you know, some of them were in the middle of level of the business, but it was interesting um, lecture on uh, how to work with social media and things like this. I was pretty much applying there to be a speaker, but I had to listen what they put like teaching things like that. So mm -hmm. I was introduced to this interesting audience and it was really incredibly learn powerful learning exercise because here are the things from these people who are our customers, yours and mine. Mm -hmm. It's super important because they think differently than us marketers. So one of these gentlemen who is in business since 1979, doesn't have website, doesn't have social media, totally work on referrals, say i don't really need a website because website have to be like handled you know what if information will be outdated people will compare me and other people with websites and they all look the same i am different i don't have a website it was completely different stories than we marketers tell other people you know he mm -hmm. said completely different and then he also said that well you know I receive a lot of emails from other people and they send and send and send these emails and it's so annoying. Guys, you like, you know, you send people away with your crazy amount of emails and sales. And that was actually the re revelation for him, I guess, because there were a few marketers who did try to explain him the ideas that the marketing is always filtering system. Mm -hmm. It is designed in such a way that it repel people who are not your ideal clients and it attract your ideal clients. Just as you say, I, that, that's what I say about that guy. Uh, he most likely a great expert. I will never work with him because what I heard there was too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, that what I mentioned was just a part of the story. It was too much, but most likely somebody will just enjoy working with him. So as you said, it's absolutely filtering system. I absolutely agree with you. So speaking about this, I know that creativity also can repel or attract people. So what do you think about that? Um, I was going to save this for a little later, but I want to talk about the three creativity truths uh, because I think it's important. When we say creativity, you have an idea of what creativity is. I have an idea. And the audience has a various random ideas. Some people start thinking about, oh, it needs to be artistic, uh, which it doesn't. Uh, that's not what creativity is. Uh, but the three truths about creativity. The first one, everybody has creativity. We all have it. That's just, that's just a fact. If you're an entrepreneur, you have created a business. You consistently create products or you create service. That is a part of creativity. Not necessarily creation. We can get into semantics of that. But that there is a creative aspect to it. And you can't deny me that. The second truth about creativity is that it looks different for everyone. And that is what everybody, like you said, gets caught up. You look at another person's website, their social media, and you're going, wow, they're so creative. I could never do that. You don't need to do that. It's different for everyone. You need to do what your version is. And that goes right into the third one. And this is the biggest takeaway, if you could, out of all these to take. Never let other people define your creativity. Never. Because it's different for everyone and everyone has it. So how could you let somebody else define it? And a lot of people might be listening and going, great stuff. And that's all hippy dippy. Wonderful. Like, oh yeah, great. Creative. Creativity in business has to have two qualifications. It has to be different. We kind of nailed that. It has to be functional. Um, so if it's different, but it's not functional, we call that trash. Maybe we call it abstract art. Um, you know my stance now. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, but if it's functional and it's no different than anybody else's, okay, that's just the product you've always made. So as long as, and depending on how much different it is, and yet it's still functional, then it's that much more creative. So in, in that sense, as long as you understand that you have this capacity and it doesn't have to look like other people, you can develop the creativity within your business very easily as you go through those steps. 
I want to ask you about something which is probably slightly on a tangent because I do my research how to help people to unlock their creativity and to go from defensive mode where we most of the time put by society, by circumstances, by other people and then in this mode we are not vulnerable, we are not open, we protect ourselves and we, when I teach people how to show up on camera it show up in a very stiff body language so people like can't present anything they're so stiff and then you know when they go in they flow in their creativity state they are open they they're joyful it's just you know fantastic to listen to them and that's how they get this kind of millions of subscribers on youtube and things like that mm -hmm. so my question to you from your perspective what is the best way to move from this defensive state, which occasionally we appear like every day on a few times. You know, somebody step on your leg in the transport, you know, you're in a traffic jam, you're like, <laughs> you know, so this is defensive mode, you are not creative in that state. Mm -hmm. So we occasionally appear there. So what is your best method to move from this defensive mode towards more light and creative flow mode? This is where I will tell you the story of why I named the company the professional unicorn. Uh, the unicorn part came out because I've been called a unicorn the vast majority of my life. Um, growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, it's rare that people stayed in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm in Los Angeles now. We moved, but still. Um, so you were always called a unicorn if you stayed around after a while. My family stayed, so I would come back after um, undergrad. And just with all the creativity and stuff and, and music and videos that I made, people consistently would, throughout my life were saying, you're a unicorn, you're a unicorn. So I just always went, I kind of identify with that. And going into the clinic when I started as a physical therapist, you had to wear a shirt, you had to wear a tie, which I hated because I had to show people exercises and showing them in a suit and tie. Like it was, it was miserable. It's like, why do we have to do this? And because we have to be professional. And so there's this part of you have to be professional. You have to show up professional all of the time. And I held on to that moniker the entire time. And when I decided that I wanted to start this new marketing venture, I was going, I can't call myself a unicorn. People would say that's unprofessional. And I was like, well, what if I call it the professional unicorn? They can't tell me that's unprofessional. It's in the name. Uh, and so that bred this idea that a consistency with people of where they go, this is unprofessional, whatever that thought might be. And so whenever they get on camera, they're going, I'm going to show up in an unprofessional way. If I'm too lighthearted, if I'm too myself, that's not professional. That's not what I see other people doing. So it's wrong. It's incorrect. And I think that you need to let go of what professional is. Professional looks different for different people in different industries very differently. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so because if a, a surgeon comes into an operating room dressed in a full suit, you're going, that's strange. You, sh you, know, you should have scrubs on. And what, what are you doing? This makes no sense. Um, I was talking about the person I talked with yesterday. She's a mom and she helps families with financial planning. If she wore a full suit, that would also be very strange. But that's what we tend to think. That's professional. You have to be stiff. And I'm going, no, eat a Jolly Ranger while you're on camera. Why not? You're a mom and you're speaking to other moms. That only makes sense um, in, in that sense. So I think this also brings in that aspect of authenticity is finding what is actually authentically professional for your business in your specific situation. Once you figure that out and you realize you don't need to be living by other people's standards, and yes, this is another filtering method because some people will go, you're unprofessional, you talk about unicorns, um, then you realize that, oh, I am now in the niche with the people that need to be with me, and this is what professional looks like for me, and that loosens you up on camera because you're no longer bound by the chains of, I'm not professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so interestingly, one of my favorite quotes, always be yours elf unless you can be a unicorn then always be a unicorn <laughs> so i had it on my wall long time and in, in kiev so uh, definitely you should be unicorn uh, so thinking about that i absolutely love the story and i absolutely love this kind of loosening up which also reminded me that you know i definitely have to start my fashion line because <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you you just reminded me about that when I was in student time. I, I had this idea because uh, I, I love fashion. I love sewing clothes and stuff like this. I did use the sport that uh, stiff material, which is very stretchable for sport. And I did use it to create the office suits for myself. So, you know, actually I had suits in which you can do anything. <laughs> So that reminded me I have to get back to this idea. Or somebody else can do it. I mean, I'll, I'll be happy <laughs> to buy from them. So a little promo for future business for somebody. <laughs> Thinking about that, uh, give us your best three advice about creativity and about anything what you like to give. I mean, I, I think that you give a lot of interesting advice about mindset as well, not just about creativity, right? Mm. So the first one, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record, I know, but it's, it's let go of that, that word professional. Um, that, that will have to be it, it is because we are so attached to this idea of this is professional, this is not professional. Um, and this comes down also to relaying to people what you do. And you, you talked about before of adding, adding that little piece of authenticity to your introduction. Most of the time, whenever people get on networking events, they go, oh, this is how everybody else is doing it. So this is how I'm going to do it. And the way people introduce themselves is they usually say what it is that they do, who they are, which they don't really say who they are. They just say their title and their company, which that doesn't actually define who you are. And then maybe at the end, they might say why they actually do it. Um, and so in a terrible example, what this may look like is I help people with taxes. I am an accountant. I love putting smiles on sad families' faces. But a better way of doing it and showing up, which I don't know why people don't think this is professional, is flip that entirely on its head and start with your why. And so in that same terrible example, you would go, I love putting smiles on sad, sad uh, families' faces. I am an accountant and I help them with taxes. That allows me to connect with you a lot more because the first part, the why is what I'm going to connect with immediately. And somehow people think the professional thing to do is to tell you my job title, but my job, your job title just puts you into a box and makes me go, yeah, I think I know what you do, but I don't really care. So that is a very useful little piece of information of making sure that you're going, okay, this is how I can kind of relatively get through these. Um, I wrote down the second one, but I'm just trying to remember it. Uh, oh, yes, yes. So the second piece of advice, um, and this is where I'm going to use a little um, it, it stems into the first of professionalism, but it's figuring out what makes you different and what is, why is your product or service different? And this is again in the definition part of it, because so many people will go, yeah, we do this and 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 this. And then you're going, so what do you do? Um, and, and you get lost in it and they're going, well, we have to compete with everybody else and we have to showcase how well we do this. And so what people tend to do, and this is where imposter syndrome tends to um, fall in is they go, who is the best of the best in my industry? And I usually put that up as the king of spades. The king of spades is like the best of the best in, in your industry that you think of. And in that realm, there also might be a jack of spades in that same room. And the jack will always say, well, the king is better at spades than I am, of course. And then there might be a third person in that room. In this case, it will be the 10 of spades. And all of them are saying, yes, the king, the king is, is, is the most important, the most valuable person. You should always listen to them. And then you walk in and you're a little little seven of hearts and you're going, I don't know anything about spades. These guys are way above me. I have no idea what I'm doing. But all of a sudden in this room, a question is asked about hearts. And all these spades are going, um, we're not sure. And you, tiny little seven, immediately trump even the king of spades. Because you're in that moment, the matter expert in that room. And so that's it. You're, you're winning out and you shouldn't feel as an imposter in that self because what you're doing is you're comparing yourself to the king of hearts in the entire world, as opposed to thinking, am I the matter expert in this room? And that's what can make you different in that case is when you're listening to all these people, you're finding what is that tiny part that really differentiates what I do and how I do it. So going back through them, redefine what professional is for you, figure out what is actually different for, for your part. And then the third one is take action. Please take action. The vast majority of people deliberate way too long and don't take action. Uh, something that I love to do as a creative process for myself is 
I love reading quotes. I think a lot of people get inspired by quotes, but what I like to do is I read the quotes and then I try to see if I can summarize a couple different quotes in one quote from myself and make my own unique quotes. And one that I came up with that kind of showcases that is use the past as a lesson and not as a whip. Use the present for action more than deliberation and use the future for hope instead of worry. And now if you align all of these, the reason I say lesson versus whip is so many people go, I've made mistakes. I suck. I'm terrible. Why did I keep making the mistake? You made a mistake. Learn from the mistake. Use it as a lesson. Don't whip yourself over and again and again with it. In terms of the present, you're going to think about it a lot and watch 20 more YouTube videos before you actually take the action. Take the action in the moment. That's the only time you can take the action. And then don't worry as much about the future because then the outcome won't be as good. Hope that the future outcome will be great. And once you have all those things aligned, you're learning from the past, you're taking action in the present, and then you're actually doing and hoping for the best in the future. That's when everything aligns for you in that way. And that's, I know it may sound a little woo-woo, but that, that has been one of the most interesting pieces of advice for me that I've repeatedly learned through the years. I really love it because it's like when I ask people about advice, most of the people expect that financial people will speak about finances and creative people will speak about creativity and rarely it happened on the show. <laughs> so most of the people give completely different recommendations, which I personally love because I think they give recommendations which actually work for them. And that what makes the show so valuable because we learn not just from professionals who you ditch so much in this show, <laughs> but really learn from people and their experience because it's important and it's really, really powerful. So how people can connect with you? The easiest way, stephanzavalin.com. Um, it's the same thing. You can find me on social media, but if you want all of it, stephanzavalin.com. Excellent. And I know that they can find some gifts on your site and stuff like this, right? So there's uh, right now there's a, there's a free ebook. It's called the 101 Creative Content Ideas for entrepreneurs and small business owners. And so it has a variety of different industries and it really will just make you think differently about content um, and the way you create content for social media. And all of a sudden you'll go, is that, is that considered content? Yes, it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you it is. It's very interesting what we can do. Um, and then of course, on social media, there's constant tips, constant uh, ways to help you out or just a little inspiration from a unicorn because sometimes we need that. <laughs> a little rainbow gift. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show i had an absolute blast it flew by thank you for having me thank you